After we finished the project, we realized that was a mistake. No, another thing that a lot of commenters were concerned about has to do with what you see going on in the background here. That water built up before it started flowing back out again, and it burst. We had a big mudslide down onto my father-in-law's driveway below. So let's just put them down on the ground. Today I have just a small project planned. We're gonna be cutting this fence here that's keeping these two paddocks separated. We're gonna attach the fencing to these posts, but in between these posts will be no fencing. That way the animals on this side of the fence and the cow side of the fence will be able to come and drink from our automatic waterer. Putting this waterer in between the fence line so that two paddocks could use the same automatic water. That idea saved us money, saved us time. It was a great idea. But not everything that we did on our recent project here to improve this place was a great idea. We did a couple things wrong. I'm gonna tell you about them in the video. gravel that I'm standing on here is the two inch gravel that we put on top of our heavy traffic area mats. So in this video, you saw us putting down geotextile fabric and then large six inch and under gravel. And then we put down this smaller two inch gravel. The idea was that the animals were not gonna be on this heavy traffic area all day long, every day. It was just gonna be their access to the barn. And so instead of putting a finer layer of either sand or finer stone, we just left it as two inch gravel. After we finished the project, we realized that was a mistake. This two inch gravel, that's pretty large still for a cow's feet to be stepping on all day every day. There were a lot of concerns in the comments section saying you shouldn't put your cows on that gravel all day long every day. Well, we thought putting in these heavy traffic areas in the drains, it would help dry out a lot of the other grounds and so the cows could stay over there on the other grounds and they would just walk over this to get to the barn. Well, we were wrong. You can see where the gravel is, it's nice and dry, but right one foot off the gravel and there's a puddle. That area is still a mud pit and I don't want my animals in mud. That's why we went through all this work. So we decided to keep the cows on the gravel, but they didn't like it. They were not walking around on the two inch, they were staying in the mud with free choice as to walking on the two inch gravel or going in the mud. They were choosing the mud. So we figured we needed to change it up. We needed to do something different. We could tell the cows did not like standing on this two inch gravel. So then we decided we needed to find a smaller, finer material that we could put on top of these heavy traffic areas so they would actually want to be on them. My father-in-law had a pile of a very fine like pea gravel that he had tried using before on a driveway. And he said, why don't you come and take a scoop of that and see if they like that. So we decided to do a test. We put down one thin path of that small fine pea gravel. We put the cow's house on that, we brought them to it, fed them on the pea gravel, and then they, we left them with the GoPro running. They had access to the two inch gravel, the fine pea gravel, and the mud. And we just left them for a few hours to see what would they spend the most time on. After coming back and looking at the paddock, I knew right away all the cow's poops were on the fine pea gravel. The 
cows don't like the two-inch gravel. We noticed they were not wanting to walk on it. They were avoiding it whenever possible. Now they're on it right now because I put some hay down there because I had to move them for today so I could work in the attic. But they wouldn't choose to be on there. And I know this because I did a test yesterday. I did a test yesterday. I moved the cows out here onto this small pea gravel that we got. This is very small, very fine. They had access to the mud, to the pea gravel, and they also had access back there to where there was that two inch stone. And when I came out this morning, I found poops and footprints all over the pea gravel, a little bit on the mud, not one poop was out on the two inch. Now this is covered now, we just finished filling this with pea gravel, so that's all pea gravel there. The cows chose this fine material best. Well, you'll notice that in that paddock where I just was, we still have the two inch gravel on the ground. In this paddock, we have converted to completely using this much finer, much smaller stone. It's a, uh, like a quarter of an inch size stone. It's very soft when you walk on it. The cows love being on it. When given choice of being in this, two inch stone or the mud, they spent all day on this and they've been really enjoying this. Now this is still a gravel. The water still gets down through it and gets off the property. If you're going to make these heavy traffic areas like we did, if they're gonna be on it a lot, like our cows, we decided, you know what? That area didn't dry off at all. We want them where it's dry. Let's put them on this full time. They hated being on it. So right away we came in and we filled it with this nice quarter of an inch size gravel, which is what you see them walking around on now. I have to thank my father-in-law because he had a big pile of this material and he just said, come on. He actually, he had a big pile of this material on his side of the hill and uh, he sent his operator, filled up a truck, sent a whole truckload of the stuff here for us to put down for the cows. Uh, so he's looking out for the cows. And I wanted to say a special thanks to my father-in-law and my mother-in-law uh, for this project. Uh, they have been a huge help in sourcing materials. Uh, they had one of their operators here we showed you that day working in the grade all. Uh, so just a lot of help with this project we couldn't have done without their help. They've been a huge resource for us as we've improved uh, the property here, the area around the barns. Uh, so thank you to them. So this paddock where the cows are currently, as you can see, is all in that quarter inch stone. The paddock behind me where I was just working, about half of it is in quarter inch stone. The other half is still the two inch. We're gonna finish filling the quarter inch stone all the way out, the little pea gravel. We're just waiting for a cold day. It's so warm today, it's muddy, and if I get the tractor out there, I'll get stuck in a rut. So, got about halfway to go on that one. Then we can have animals in that paddock. Everybody can share that waterer. There's now access on both paddocks to our automatic waterer. One waterer, two paddocks serviced by it, just, Awesome, efficient way to do things here. Uh, everybody's gonna be on good dry ground. Now, another thing that a lot of commenters were concerned about has to do with what you see going on in the background here in this livestock traffic path. Here's the next issue that we saw a lot of comments. People were concerned that when the cows got in here and started pooping on the gravel, they were gonna turn this nice gravel area right back into another muddy, mucky mess. Don't get me wrong, wherever you put your cows and hay, you're gonna have a mucky mess. As you can see, there's a lot of hay and a lot of poop here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nasty. If you're wondering why I'm so cool with my pants tucked into my socks, it's like 60 degrees out today. I'm worried I'm gonna get ticks crawling on me, so <laughs> not trying to start a new fashion trend. Maybe I am. Wherever the cows are, hay and poop is gonna be there and that creates that mucky, nasty mess. We have so much gravel here that it doesn't much matter. It's not gonna plug up the gravel, water's not gonna get stuck there. It's not gonna be a pond sitting there. Uh, by the end of this winter, I will have to come in here and scoop that away. And when I do that, there will be some gravel loss. There's really nothing you can do about that. You have to clean the poop and the hay muck off the gravel pads. That is why I put that little structure right where I did.
You'll notice our cow shelter where they get fed hay and where they're pooping a lot is at the very edge of our gravel pad. On the other side is where the mud begins. I'm gonna come in in the spring, pull that shelter out of the way, back blade off with the tractor, the nasty mucky mess, and I'll have about one bucket full worth of gravel that's removed that I'll have to replace each year. If I were to put that thing in the center or move it around and get this whole thing all messed up, there'd be a lot of loss and it'd become really mucked up. Putting it at the back there, not gonna be a big problem. Maybe a little extra gravel each season I'll have to replace, not a big deal. But as you can see, the minute you walk away from that house, it gets much less mucky. And for the poops that are all around the rest of the pad, I have what is so far working pretty good as a solution. You'll notice as you come away from the little house there, there's a lot more isolated poops. We have been feeding our chickens out here on this gravel pad. Two farm boys with me today doing the chores. That one's not exactly pulling his weight, but this one is. What'd you do so far today? Uh, so far I'm getting ready for letting the chickens out. Have you sprinkled their feed yet? Not yet. Can I film you doing that? Sure. Let's do it. There's the brigade. Out they go. And they have one very important job in our new paddocks here. Watch this, he puts it down and boom, they start working on it. And sometimes I give it a little step. And watch what they do to those poops. They break them all up. So the chickens are out here scratching up the poops and they're doing a pretty good job of it. We're trying to keep this all kind of aerated and broken up. And uh, that way it can still, it, there we go, exactly. He's doing a good job. He's breaking up the poops, keeping the gravel exposed so that it drains and this never becomes big and mucky. That's great. The chickens are doing what they do best, going around and scratching at the ground for their feed. So we've been sprinkling the feed all over this pad here. They're getting feed everywhere, including on top of and in the cow poops. And actually when the cows eat the whole grains, they wind up in their poops. So the chickens are going through the gravel pad and they're scratching all the cow poops and they're breaking up really nicely to the point where they're so small, I don't think they're gonna cause any kind of muck or build up or problem over the years. I think they're so small, they get washed down through and washed away. You can see right here, there's a remnant of what was a poop. It's been totally scratched into oblivion. We're hoping that the chickens continue to scratch this up, keep the gravel clean and kind of aerated and the water can go right through that. So that's not really something we did wrong. That's something we're kind of testing out. We'll know in a year or so if it becomes a real big problem, in which case we would just have to come out here and scoop up the poops daily, which not really something we want to have to do, but it might be something we have to do in the future. Uh, the point is, there's not much you can do about your animals pooping on the traction mat. Uh, they're going to have each on the heavy traffic area. They're going to poop there. Uh, so you just got to figure out how to mitigate the poop. And so far, the chickens are doing a nice job with that. The other thing that we did wrong with this project, uh, behind me is that big gravel field that we built to contain all the water coming off of the property, down the hill, getting caught in the heavy traffic areas, getting into the curtain drains, that tons and tons of water came flowing here into this big gravel field that we built. The gravel field idea was we would leave a lot of space at the bottom to let the water perk fill up and then perk into the soil before uh, slow it all down and prevent water loss. The only thing we did wrong was our our volume that we put in this gravel field. We didn't have we had too much and because it's located near a hillside, that water built up before it started flowing back out again and it burst. We had a big mudslide down onto my father-in-law's driveway below. So, we wound up having to dig this field back up 
we dug it back up again and uh, we were able to find the pipes. Instead of the overflow pipe being here, we lowered it a little bit so there was less volume and now this is holding really good. And uh, that is pretty much all that we did wrong here. Everything else is working fantastic. It's such a different experience coming out here now, walking around the barn. You can see this is the side where the goats used to be. Me and the pups are taking a little walk here. It's now bone dry. It's, uh, it's a wet day, it had just rained last night. It's bone dry out here. I'm not wearing big rubber boots, I'm wearing just my hiking boots. The chickens are out here, pecking around, scratching up the gravel, keeping it clean for us. My son is using his frost-free hydrant every day. Uh, our chicken watering system in the winter is pretty simple. It's nothing too complicated. We just keep that rubber dish right there. We flip it over every day, kick it once, all the ice falls out. And then my son, all he has to do is turn this on. Fresh water flows all winter long from that. Meanwhile, our paddocks behind me, the cows can be in. They can walk over to their automatic waterer right there. They're walking around on that quarter inch stone, which is much nicer on their feet. Uh, right now, we've actually moved the cows into this paddock where their little shelter is. They have access to that waterer. And the chickens are out here, as you can see. They're scratching up the poops. They're out on scratching duty. Everything is working fantastic. The water is draining. We can work out here. The animals are out here. They're not getting injured, not pulling muscles. There's not going to be disease being bred out here in puddles. It's so much better. If you missed any of the videos in that series and you want to know how to do any of the improvements we did, go check out the playlist there. That's all the repairs we've done, all the videos. And uh, I just can't encourage you enough in 2020, do a couple good infrastructure projects that make your homestead work better because it makes your life easier and means you can have more animals, which coming soon there'll be more animals out here.